Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I recently released a video titled Red Tail Boa Growth Comparison from 1 to 9 years old where I showed you the sizes of different ages of true red tail boas born between 2022 and 2014. And so I got a lot of good feedback from you guys. You seem to enjoy this type of video. Someone actually asked if I can do the same with hog island boas. And you know, that's definitely a good idea. Unfortunately, I don't have every year of hog island boa. I just have a couple years worth of holdbacks. But I thought it might be a cool video to look at dwarf and semi-dwarf locality boas by year born, just so you can see the relative sizes of different aged dwarf and semi-dwarf boas from just under a year old up to like seven or eight years old, you know, full grown adults. And you know, I thought I would do dwarf and semi-dwarf. The dwarfs are ones that are somewhere in the range of four to five feet as adults like tar humara, crawl key, cocker key, etc. And then the semi-dwarfs are the ones that don't get that much bigger, maybe up to six feet or so. Things like Hog Island and Longicotta and some of the Central American mainland boas. And so I know that a lot of people have questions about the growth rates of their boas. They're concerned that their boa might be growing too fast or too slow. And there's all kinds of noise on Facebook and opinions that you probably don't want. But I just thought I'd show you what typical boas look like at different ages. We're gonna start in 2022. 20, these are animals born just last year, not quite a year old. Uh, these guys are now nine or 10 months old. And the first is this Tarahumara dwarf boa born here last year, I believe in July. So this one's about 10 months old. You can see not very large. I would say probably a little bit less than two feet long maybe like, you know, 20, 21 inches. And this one's probably put on, I don't know, five, six inches since it was born. You know, obviously when they're dwarf boas, they don't have a lot to put on to get to adult size. And if it's gonna take them four or five years to get there, they're not gonna put on that much growth every year. So I would say this animal uh, will probably put on, you know, about six inches of growth every year for the next four years, get up to about four feet or so. This is a female, they get a little bit bigger but doing real well. This one is actually still eating live. This one's been interested in frozen thawed rodents and will snap at them and constrict them, but then she invariably just spits them out and I find them in the tub the next day. So usually I just give in and give her a live one, but uh, pretty soon she'll switch over to the frozen thawed. But uh, real beautiful animal, lots of nice colors on this one, beautiful pattern. A lot of people have been asking me about tar for 2023. I have a pairing going on, it's actually still going on. And as of yet, the female doesn't appear gravid, which you know isn't a great sign. So I don't know if I'm gonna get Tarahimara this year, but my fingers are still crossed. If I don't have Tarahimara, hopefully I'll have some of the other dwarf boas. So hopefully it'll be a good year for dwarf boas here at Brian Boas. 2022 was definitely a good year for the dwarf boas. And I had litters of Tarahimara, Qual Key, and Cocker Key. This is one of the Cocker Keys. It was actually my first year breeding cocker keys. And this is a holdback female. I'd say she's maybe a little bit bigger than the Tarahimara, maybe about two feet or so. Also not yet eating frozen thawed. These dwarf boas can just be a little bit picky about switching over. So typically they're on live for their first year or so. And this female is developing really nicely, very beautiful markings, really nice symmetrical blotches. She's actually looking pretty light today. You know, they kind of go through dark and light phases, but this is kind of her light phase, but just very beautiful, dark, silvery gray color. Just a gorgeous animal. And these guys have really grown on me. I, I got a pair of them from a friend who was getting out of boas. Wasn't even planning on getting them and I grew them up. Actually, I'll show you one of the parents later on in this video, but they've rapidly become one of my favorite locality boas. They're just so, enjoyable to handle, really chill, and the size is great. You can't beat the size of these animals if you're looking for something that doesn't get that big. But this female will probably get to be about five, four and a half, five feet or so, but it'll probably take her about five years. This is her at not quite a year old. Thought I'd show you one more 2022 born dwarf boa. This is a crawl key, and she's about the same size as the cocker key, which isn't surprising since they're pretty closely related and get to about the same adult size of about four to five feet. 
also doing well. You can see her collars are quite a bit lighter than the Cocker Key and she has less defined markings, kind of more jungly looking, more striping and kind of connected saddles. But that's typical for the Call Key. But another really nice locality bow to keep if you're looking for something that doesn't get that big. I have pairings this year. I'm hopeful I'm going to have Qual Key this year. So that should be a pretty good litter. Probably sometime around July I would expect it to be born. But you can see even at a year old, you're looking at about two feet long. They're just not fast growers and of course they don't get all that big. So she'll put on another, you know, eight inches or so a year for the next few years till she reaches her adult size. Next on to the year 2021, and I don't have any true dwarf boas from 2021 to show you, but I have a couple that I would call the semi-dwarf category. One of them is this long tail or longicata boa. So this guy is approaching about three feet. He's now not quite two years old, doing real well. Just a really nice example. This is a beset bloodline uh, animal, and I held back some of these. They're growing nicely putting about eight inches or so of growth per year and this guy is going to get to be about five and a half or six feet you know like his parents his father mother and father who incidentally i have them breeding again this year i'm not sure i'm going to get a litter though it's still too early to tell and i actually still have some babies from last year some uh, 2022 longicata they're from the russo bloodline and those guys are still available if you want to check them out on my Flickr page the link is below the video description but these longicata are really great to keep. People that have them really, really like them, and it's not hard to see why. They're just really chill, really beautiful to look at. Definitely look different than most other boas, and definitely a cult favorite. But this is about the size that a two-year-old longicata boa should be. Uh, some people might have some that are a little bit bigger, that maybe if you feed them like every week, they're gonna grow a little bit faster. I feed mine about every 10 days to two weeks, and. I found that that puts a nice rate of growth on them, not too fast, not too slow, and they end up reaching their adult size at about four to five years of age. One more example of a 2021 born semi-dwarf boa. This guy is a Honduran firebelly boa actually, and this type gets to be about five and a half to six feet or so. This guy is a little bit bigger than the Longi. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, probably about three feet, a little bit thicker too. The longicata tend to be pretty slim and slender as far as boas. And this guy's doing real well. Just a gorgeous looking example. Just love the colors on this guy. You can see he's got a lot of striping, reduced saddles. And I love the head shape on these animals. They've got this really blocky looking short head with these really big reddish uh, brown eyes. Just a really distinctive looking boa. And you can see the beautiful colors on the sides. And they're also famous for the colors on their belly, hence the name fire belly boa. Typically the colors get best when they're around four to five years or so. So he's still developing as far as the colors. And these are just kind of really neat boas. Their behavior is a little unpredictable. You can see I'm being a little careful because sometimes they'll be really chill, but then sometimes they'll just bite without much warning. Just kind of a behavioral idiosyncrasy of this type of boa. But he's kind of behaving right now. I don't have any, unfortunately, this year, but hopefully next year I'll have pairing of Honduran fire bellies for some babies, hopefully in the summer of 2024. But you can see this is a two-year-old Honduran fire belly. He's about three feet long. Guy, This guy's still eating jumbo mice. I'll probably switch him over to small rats pretty soon. Moving back a year to 2020, so this animal is almost three years old, and this is another dwarf, a crocker key, or crawl key dwarf boa. This guy, I'd say, is probably about three and a half feet or so, between three and three and a half feet, growing nicely. And believe it or not, he's not going to get all that much bigger than this. I would say in another eight inches or so, he'll have reached breeding size. So. I'm probably not going to breed him next year. I don't think I have any females in the lineup for him, but probably the following year. So for that will be um, 2025 breeding season. He'll be ready to go. And just a really nice light colored silvery example of the Qual Key Dwarf Boa. This guy is doing real well. Held back um, actually a trio that year 
this guy and two of his sisters and they're all about the same size and what I like about these call key is they all have different markings unlike the cocker key that are very uniform with symmetrical saddles these guys all have different shaped saddles some have striping I think this guy's got some striping towards his tail if you can see there and they're generally speaking they're also quite a bit lighter than the cocker key and they're a little bit more slender the cocker key tends to be a little thicker and more robust feeling than the crawl key which is a little more slender and a little more graceful looking but they're both really nice dwarf locality boas from islands off the coast of belize and this guy is not quite three years old next a boa for 2019 and this guy is almost four years old and this guy is a hog island which the person who requested this video actually asked for this is a male doing real well this guy is from a cross of a pure sears bloodline with an animal i got from ron greenberg and i really like this guy he's just got these beautiful colors lots of greens and pinks and even bluish color a um, little bit darker than my pure sears bloodline but also more colorful lots of these speckles which you expect in pure hog island boas and just doing real well i would say this guy is almost four feet long probably almost ready to breed actually although I don't think he's going to be paired up next year. I just I don't have any females in the lineup for him, but we'll just have to see. And um, I haven't had hogs the last few years, unfortunately, but I have my fingers crossed for this year. I tried a new male that's you know a little bit younger. My older male seems to be just not uh, getting the job done lately. Not sure what's going on. Might be shooting blanks if you know what I mean. But hopefully this new younger male will get the job done and uh hogs are great they've seem to be kind of hard to find lately especially the pure ones you just want to make sure that if you're looking for a hog you don't buy a hypo hog or a sunset boa which is a cross between a hog and a boa imperator not a pure hog so just ask questions before you buy make sure that your uh, seller is up front with you as far as the lineage of the hog because you don't want to end up with something that you didn't want to get and you know if you want to keep hypo hogs or sunsets that's great those are kind of cool looking too but just be upfront uh you know if you're buying and selling boas about what you're looking for or what you're selling just so there's no surprises but just shows you what a boa almost four years old looks like uh for as far as the semi-dwarf category this 2019 hog island boa next we have another hog island boa this is a 2018 model so this uh, female is almost five years old, a year older than the male I just showed you. And this female I'd say is approaching sexual maturity and breeding size. She might be bred next year, I just have to see. But she's probably about four and a half feet or so. Not in a huge difference from the 2019 animal, but she's noticeably more round and thick. Not round, but you know, thicker in girth. And uh, probably about six inches or so longer but this is probably I would call you know a young adult female hog island boa uh, doing real well this is a uh, pure Sears bloodline the parents came from Vin Russo and I believe this was the first year I bred hog islands back in 2018 just a great species or a great uh, locality to work with you know, one of the oldest of the locality boas these guys first entered the pet trade back in i think the late 70s or early 80s and lots of them were taken from the island you know fortunately they're protected now for a while it seemed like they were completely wiped out of their native islands and in the 90s they got full protection and they made the islands into national park and luckily they seem to have, re have rebounded because for a while it seemed like they were all gone because so many people had collected them it's kind of crazy that these islands are only you know a, a mile or so across and thousands and thousands of boas were collected between the, the 70s and the, the 90s so luckily they have a second chance and luckily we have a lot of them still in captivity since we're not going to get any more from the wild because they're now completely protected but we have to make sure that we keep them pure just so this type of locality boa is not lost to the hobby and this is a beautiful 2018 hog island boa here's another 2018 holdback this guy is a Hunterne firebelly boa young adult male I'd say he's a little bit bigger than the hog we just saw probably about five feet or so a little bit thicker 
can see this guy's developing really nicely, getting that nice orange fire belly. And look at the head of this guy, those beautiful orangey brown eyes, the uh, striping, and this guy you can see has just a few saddles, really cool look. These guys have this beautiful kind of olive brown ground color, and the tail has kind of these dark maroonish blotches. But just doing real well. This guy, I'd say he's probably ready to breed next year. He probably could have bred this year actually, but I didn't have any females for him, so we'll hopefully pair him up next year. But just an example of a young adult boa from 2018 that's now a five-year-old animal. And just, uh, you can appreciate the, the nice muscles on this guy, really well-developed muscles, and the size that a boa of this age, of this type, should be. One more 2018 holdback, and this is another uh, true dwarf boa. This is a Torahumara mountain boa, a female. She's probably about four feet long, a little bit smaller than the hunter and fire belly we just saw. But this is an adult female. She might get a little bit bigger, but probably not that much. Just, you know, doing real well. And um, not sure if she's gonna breed next year, possibly, but we'll just have to see. But this gives you an idea about the size of a five-year-old adult uh, Tarahimahara dwarf boa. Really not that big, and not gonna get much bigger than this. Next, we have another Tarahimara from 2017. So this one is a year older than the female I just showed you. And she's really not that much bigger, maybe a little bit bigger, not much more than a few inches. She's looking a little thick. She ate, you know, just a few days ago, so that's why she's looking a little thick today. But not a huge bow at all. Maybe a four, maybe a little bit more than four feet, I'd say, pushing four and a half feet. Maybe not even that big, somewhere between four and four and a half feet. And this female bred last year was her first year breeding, had a really nice litter. Uh, in fact, the baby I just showed you at the beginning was one of her babies. And some of you guys hopefully got some of her other babies, although there weren't, unfortunately, too many to go around. But doing real well, recovering from her breeding. Of course, getting the year off. But, you know, we'll see. Maybe next year she'll be bred again and hopefully give me another nice litter. But nice looking adult female Tarahumara mountain boa. This one is now six years old, born in 2017. One more not quite six year old animal born here in 2017 is this Qual Key male. And this guy, I'd say, is maybe a little bit bigger than the Tarahumara, maybe about, uh, about four and a half feet or so. This guy also was fed recently, so he's still a little bit thick in the middle. But these uh, Qual Key tend to be a little bit more slender than the Tarahimar and the Cocker Key. But uh, they're definitely quite strong and they like to hold on. But this guy's doing real well. Not gonna really get much bigger than this, although of course all snakes continue to grow through their life, so he might put on a few more inches. But this is about as big as he gets. This is a 2017 male Crawl Key Dwarf Boa. One more boa for today's video. This is the only 2016 animal I'm going to show you. This is the oldest of the video, obviously a full-grown adult. This guy was born here. I don't have any holdback smaller boas from 2016, but this is a Cocker Key boa bred by Chris Wolf. And uh, this guy's a full adult, had his first litter last year. He's actually the father of the baby I showed you in the first few scenes. Doing quite well. He also ate not that long ago, so he's still a little bit thick around. But uh, these guys are definitely quite robust. They like to hold on. They're quite muscular. And they've really grown on me since I acquired my pair. Must be about four or five years ago. Had a friend that was getting out of boas and had this pair, and I already had the qual key. I didn't plan on getting the cocker key because I thought they were pretty much the same thing. But I got them, and I'm really happy I did. And they've really grown on me. And I definitely can appreciate the differences between the two forms. You know, superficially, they have similar colors, similar size. Behavior is not that much different, but they definitely do have a difference in appearance with these guys being darker and more robust and kind of more blocky saddles than the Qual Key. But they're both great boas to keep 
and they're both really super convenient because they don't get that big. This is a full grown adult Cocker Kiboa from 2016. So that was a look at the sizes to expect from your dwarf and semi dwarf boas as they grow. And I hope this was helpful. And you know, if you have a boa that you don't think is growing at the right rate, they all grow differently. So remember, as long as it's putting on slow but steady growth, you're probably fine. With these guys, you're typically looking at about six to eight inches or so of growth a year. Um, so they're not going to grow fast. They're only going to be putting on about maybe three feet or so between when they're babies and when they're adults. So it's really not a lot of growth. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to shoot me any questions or comments you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.